Many of you have a very difficult time picking colors. And fortunately with Mid Journey, you can create color schemes using prompts and then implement them in your designs. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that today with a couple of different examples. And you're gonna find that this will really take the guesswork out of some of your color scheming, all right? So basically, the way we're gonna get started with this is I'm in Mid Journey, I have Mid Journey subscription and I have my own server, so I don't have to, you know, there's like a million people scrolling by, so it's, it's I definitely recommend inviting it to your own, your server. Especially if you're a UI UX designer, you know, you can really benefit from Mid Journey big time. Uh, in terms of de generating design assets and all that stuff. Um, and so for instance, like for here, I, I put a, a um, prompt UI UX design pink and blue, AR for aspect resolution 16 by nine. These are pink and blue, like if I get real close here, um, designs that could potentially work. And I'm not, I'm not looking at the actual screwed up text or anything like that. I'm looking at the colors and the overall composition. And some of these could definitely work. Now it will screw up sometimes and put white text on very light backgrounds. So that's the one thing that you have to pay attention to. Here's another one with a dark UI UX design with red accents. I, uh, this is really cool because I like this one, for instance, it has, um, there's a lot of gradients. It's not flat design in some of these examples. And we're kind of getting away from just pure flat design. So some of these will work. And so we're gonna take this example and see what we can do right here with this example. And then also here's another one, a light UI UX design with teal colors. All right, and here we go, we got that. We got a dark version and we got a light mode version. So we're gonna take this design right here and see how we can pick and choose colors to create an actual UI layout. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. So I'm gonna do this in Figma and here's the first example. So I'm just gonna get a frame out and just use the presentation, like a large 1920 by 1080 design. And I, this is the reference photo, as you can see. I'm gonna to try to remember and make this uh, Figma file available so that you can follow along. The first thing I'm gonna do is just get a background. So I'm gonna hit I right here, and that's just gonna give us uh, a background color from like right around there. And then we're gonna go ahead and just put a single frame. Let's say, for instance, we kinda of wanna create like a little card utilizing this, this color scheme. So what I'll do is hit the frame tool, and this is gonna be our card or so. I'm just gonna put it over here so we can kind of see it a little bit better. And what I'm gonna do is give it a gradient, all right? So this isn't technically flat design anymore when you do the gradient thing. So I'm gonna add a fill. We're gonna come over here and choose gradient. I'm gonna choose the first color picker and then the color stop and then go ahead and get the color picker and grab this top color right there and then get the second one and get the other color. These actually work really well for a panel, especially if we add a little bit of a shadow to it. There's pretty hardcore shadows around these, um, and that would definitely work. So if we take the corners, give ourselves a little bit of a, a corner radius, we take this and we give ourselves a drop shadow, and we can really beef, beef up the blur quite a bit. So now we can see there's a slight shadow. We can double up on that to make it even a little bit more realistic. So we could take the second shadow, which gives you a little bit of a harder shadow near it. And I could just uh, maybe reduce the opacity slightly. There we go. There. So we're already just, I did not touch any of these colors. I only picked them from this UI right here and it's already very good. So if we get some text in here, like I, uh, customization, we're using Sophia Sands for this. It works well for this type of uh, dark UI, kind of looks like, you know, hackerish, if you will. <laughs> so this is kind of cool. We could put a little, I don't know, a little mark right here. Uh, if I use the rectangle tool, just like a little dash, we'll get a, the primary red color. Okay. Now red really doesn't show up well on videos, unfortunately, because of compression, but I, this looks solid as, you know, for what it is at the moment. So I can make this bold. Then we can come down here we can go ahead and add some type like this and maybe just make it a size of 18 and light. All right, and I haven't used my Lipsum generator text uh, in a long time. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Maybe I'll get it out for the first time in like a million years. There we go. All right. And so as you could see, we're just picking and choosing colors uh, and it's working really well. For instance, down here, there's kind of like a footer color. So we can integrate that on ours easily. So let me just take this, duplicate it, get rid of the shadows on the duplicated version, pull this down. Oh, well, we'll kind of want to get rid of all this stuff inside of it. There we go. Pull this down. We can adjust the uh, corners so that we have zero on the top left and right. There we go. And now I wouldn't add a gradient right here as well because then it becomes way too gradient E, which is what was happening back in the Web 2.0 era. So I would just make this a, a, a flat color and not a, a color um, like that. So I, I could probably make this a little bit lighter or we could go a little bit darker, find the right value. So as you can see, you can really play around with this uh, stuff and make it fun. If we go back to the original color and just go slightly up, right around there. There we go. So as you can see, uh, these, these reference photos are great, a, a great way to start. So now we have like a card here, maybe another card here. Maybe we put something in this footer area, but I think we, that's, you got the idea. Let's do this another time with this image because it's, it's vastly different colors. So just to show you, and so you can get a little bit of practice by uh, take this background. It looks like they're using like a gradient background. So taking the canvas, I can go ahead and switch to a gradient. We'll grab this color, maybe a lighter one up here. And then for this one, we'll make it uh, maybe darker slightly. So they're pretty close together in value. I probably don't need to have a artboard this large because we're, we're dealing in small designs here. So let's say for instance, actually, you know what I wanna do? Let's get this color on the inside, the white going down to this light teal. We'll do that instead. So we'll take this, I uh, will get our white color and then we'll take our teal color down here. There we go. So now if I reduce that height just a bit, we'll see more of it. Now we could take like the frame tool and make the fill a white fill now we could start to see it really like that effect where we have like a nice subtle background color there's not a huge contrast between the card on the top and the background but there's enough to see a difference so if i increase this just a bit for the corner radiuses and you know maybe we go ahead and take real quickly my iconify and let's just get some random uh, icons up here. What I'm doing is just kind of recreating this area right there so we can get those colors in there. So if I just move this off, I don't know what these would have, you know, relevance to these, these icons, but I'm just putting it here just for some visual interest. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll take probably this, uh, this car color right there. Oh, we want that for selection colors. There we go. So we take this color and yeah, we'll go like right around there. Now there is some type here. Um, recommendations perhaps we'll put. This time we'll put a, yeah, let's see here. We'll go like, uh, you know what? Let's, let's be super sim simple, we'll just do enter. <laughs> So we'll do like, I, let's see, about 20 here or so. There we go. And again, we just play around with the UI, recreate kind of what you see here. And actually, I think my, uh, yeah, we'll make this a lot smaller. There we go. And again, uh, we, I'm looking specifically, it's really pixelated, but uh, these lines in the middle, I mean, all this stuff could really just give you a lot of good ideas, uh, like recommendations. Let's just take the, let's do, we'll say companies, perhaps, and then we'll get a line separator like they have. Wouldn't use black, that'd be too much contrast. So they're using actually, it looks like a, you can just grab the background color here and see if that works as a, as a separator, and it does. It works very well. So next up, just to 
further elaborate just a little bit more on this to try to complete this design out a bit. We'll take this into like, uh, we'll go light. My font scaling is incorrect because this artboard's not the correct size, no big deal. I, and then what I'll do is just grab some of this text and make it this color. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and modify the font back to enter. Okay. I really didn't need that much type, but yeah, no big deal. And then also, we'll go ahead and maybe just do one more icon. We'll be done here in a second, just to show you the final results. Yeah, maybe I'll get this right there. Again, there's no, you know, this isn't really a cohesive design that really makes too much sense, but that's not the point. Our point here is just in looking at the color schemes that's ultimately generated uh, just from grabbing colors over here. And so as you can see, yeah, it's a little bit bland right here. Um, just to get more of that color in, we could do like a toggle switch just, just to show another UI component uh, to kind of finish off this design. So if I take my, uh, let's see, my rectangle tool, we come over here and we give a big border radius. We grab our primary color. Get this scaled in. Hit O for the oval or this, the uh, oval tool, if that's what you want to call it. And look at that. So what we have here is just uh, two UI starting points uh, that were inspired essentially by AI-generated color schemes. So again, you could probably work a little bit more red here, um, like they have like this little progress bar. Sorry, I'm having too much fun with this stuff. Like we could do this and then take a darker color, like perhaps from the background and then duplicate it again like this, and then grab our primary red color. Woo, look at that. So very easy, very fun to come up uh, with color schemes if you just tell it the type of colors that you wanna work with. Hopefully that wasn't too fast for you. I mean, it's already a long video on this type of topic, but I wanted to show you how you can just recreate UI components with minimal uh, effort in terms of thinking about your color schemes. Of course, when it comes to text and icons, readability and contrast is very important. So you have to make sure you familiarize yourself with the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, the WCAG, when it talks about color contrast, adhering to minimum contrasts. Use the Stark Contrast plugin uh, to ensure that your type contrast well with your colors. Other than that, you could do, you know, it, 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 it is kind of easy to screw things up, but I, AI can definitely be one of those things that can give you ideas just off the cuff. You do have to think though a little bit about how you apply them correctly. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If so, make sure to subscribe, check out designcourse.com. I just recently, like today, released package deals, by the way, so you can get all my courses for a cheaper fee. Anyhow, I will talk to you all later and goodbye.